Hey, what's up guys? You're Philly coming at you with another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. And this is a profile um, or an idea or concept I came up with when I was doing my Toon Archetype Analysis, which you guys can check out here on my channel. And um, I want to say that this is just the idea I'm sharing for the deck right now or the current build I have for it. As I become more consistent or, the uh, or more finalized with my build, I'll be doing some more updates for the deck as well as we go along, as I make more changes to it. Um, but I really wanted to share the idea because I think it's such an interesting idea. I'm sure uh, hopefully no one else has had the idea as well. Um, but um, yeah, I think as if we keep going and we share some more videos on it as we go along, I think it would be a really cool thing to follow or to track my own progress and see how the deck evolves just, you know, for history's sake for myself. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video anyway. And please feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel and follow me on my other social media. It helps me a lot. And with this particular deck, if you have any ways that I can increase consistency of the deck or cards you think might work really well in the deck, please feel free to leave me some comments below. So basically I'm calling the deck uh, Toon Magician Girls as um, it's basically the idea of the deck is built around my favorite Toon monster, Toon Dark Magician Girl, as uh, she's both a Toon monster and a Magician Girl, meaning she has the benefits of both archetypes. Um, she can be searched and work with both archetypes quite well. So basically Toon Dark Magician Girl is a class B Toon, and as we learned in my archetype analysis for Toons, she is the only Toon that can attack the turn she summoned. Meaning that my basic idea with the deck was to be able to find a way to turbo out three Toon Dark Magician Girls and then drop three Kiwi Magician Girls on top of them to make her increase her power and then swing the opponent directly and potentially OTK them. But Toons and Magician Girls are incredibly slow, so the idea just becomes like, we need to do that, we can't OTK, but try and build up to that anyway. So Toon Dark Magician Girl is a level 6 Dark Spellcaster with 2000 attack that's also a Toon. Uh, she can be summoned from the hand, uh, but we have to tribute a monster because she's a level 6. Of course, if we use something like Cost Down, she'll become a level 4, and we can basically turn them out uh, for free. Unfortunately, adding Cost Downs to the deck does uh, take up space, very limited space that we have already. But um, there's tons of ways to summon her, which I'll go through a lot of them in my archetype analysis, and um, I'm trying to use some of that here today. So um, she's such a cute little card so i really wanted to build a deck um for her because i've been trying to make a toon deck and a magician girl deck for so long um a legit one uh it's really hard but hopefully this this will come close to a really cool idea of mixing the two so moving on to the rest of the card monsters in the deck we do play two copies of apple magician girl so apple magician girl is um if she's uh, targeted for an attack once per turn we can special summon a level five or lower spellcaster type monster from our hand and change the attack target to it um, and then if we do, the attacking monster attack becomes half its current attack. And then if she's destroyed uh, by a card effect or battle, you can add up to three other Magician Girl monsters with different names from your graveyard to your hand. So she can't grab herself specifically, but if there is another Apple, uh, um, Apple Magician Girl in graveyard, you can add her. Main reason we're, There's two main reasons why we're playing her. The summon from hand isn't super relevant. Um... Mostly because um, there aren't too many targets. Of course, we can go into Gemini Elf from our hand um, and Harvard as well. But the main reason we're playing it is for the recursion from the graveyard and the fact that she can count, give us more power for Kiwi. So she's a level 3 fire spellcaster. Next up, we have three copies of Berry Magician Girl. So when I was first coming up with the concept for this deck, Berry Magician Girl is was one of the first Magician Girls I decided to put in the deck. Um, when she's summoned, you can add any Magician Girl monster you want from your deck to your hand. So, in most cases, add Toon Dark Magician Girl. And if we've got Toon World on the field, we can tribute our Berry Magician Girl straight away and summon our Toon Dark Magician Girl and then attack, because Toon Dark Magician Girl doesn't have summoning sickness. As well as that, if she is targeted for uh, with an effect or an attack, she'll change her position and we can summon a Magician Girl monster from the deck. Again, we'll probably summon Toon Dark Magician Girl. Um, she's pretty cute. Uh, she's... The baby, obviously, level 1 Earth. Um, 400 attack. We're not going to attack with her, but she's really good for us because she does replace... She does search pretty much half the monsters in our deck, and she does replace herself immediately when she searches for Dark Magician Girl. So, it's one of the reasons why I like playing her in the deck. As well as that, she's also Magician Girl, so it gives us additional power for our Kiwi's effect as well. We play two copies of Chocolate Magician Girl. I was testing Chocolate at three, but I ended up drawing too many Chocolate Magician Girls and 
or having Chocolate Mission Girl and nothing else to discard. So I think two is good for this particular build. Chocolate Mission Girl is arguably the best Magician Girl monster as she's the most splashable in spellcasters, but for me, I think she's fine at two. Because um, again, the focus of this deck is Dark Magician Girl. Uh, once per turn, we can discard a spellcaster from our hand to draw a card. So most of the tunes are actually spellcasters, and there's only three monsters in our deck here that aren't spellcasters. And, um, and we get to draw a card, so it helps us thin our hand, uh, filter our hand a little bit and get some extra draw, but this deck has a huge problem with drawing cards. As well as that, once per turn, if she's selected as an attack target, you can special summon a spellcaster from your grave and change the attack target to it and halve the opponent's um, attacking monster's attack points, which is really good. So we can um, attack, she gets attacked, we can special summon uh, Toon Dark Magician Girl from our graveyard or any of our other Magician Girl monsters, and uh, forced to attack her. But good combo, of course, with the, with the Magician Girls is Gemini Elf, because we're gonna be halving our monsters attack, and then when Gemini Elf does damage, they lose cards from their hands. So Gemini Elf works really, really well with all the Magician Girls. And of course, because she's a Magician Girl, she gives Kiwi more power. Speaking of Kiwi, we run three, because she's amazing. We can discard Kiwi from our hand to increase the attack of all face-up Magician Girl monsters we currently control by 300 for every Magician Girl monster on our field and in our graveyard with different names. So like I said, the idea of the combo was to turbo out two or three Dark Toon Dark Magician Girls and then drop three Kiwi with a bunch of Magician Girls in Grave. Um, also the turn we discard Kiwi, spellcaster type monsters we currently control cannot be destroyed by card effects and cannot be targeted by the opponent with card effects. So she's really, really good. She's level 5 wind, and we're not really going to summon her from our hand. Um, well, normally if we have to, we can ditch her for Kiwi ki uh, Chocolate to draw, but we can always just bring her back with Apple. But the idea is to get, keep them in hand, so... Give them in hand. So moving on to the uh, onto the rest of the Toon Monsters now, we have two copies of Toon Gemini Elf. So like I said before, Gemini Elf works so well with the Magician Girls, it's not even funny. If she deals damage to um, battle damage to an opponent, uh, life points, they have to discard one random card from their hand, which is really good considering that she's already 1900 attack and all the Magician Girl monsters, with the exception of Berry, Kiwi, and Dark Magician Girl, halve the opponent's, the attacking monster's attack points, which make her so, um, so good. As well as that, uh, unfortunately she does have summoning sickness, but she's a toon and can attack directly if you have toon world and your opponent doesn't control a toon monster. So she's really good. She's also a level 4, so she can have, you know, rank 4 players with chocolate. And she can also be ditched for chocolate as well because she is a spellcaster. So now we have the uh, the first two monsters we have that are not spellcasters in the deck. This is Toon Mermaid, mostly because Toon Mermaid is a free special summon if we draw her. Pretty simple. She is a class A toon, so she can't attack the turn she's summoned, and we have to pay 500 life points in order for her to attack. I used to run Toon Dark Magician in my deck, but um, I feel that, um, and she's really good to turbo out uh, for discard for the for him and for Tribute Fodder for him, but he bricked the deck a bit too much because we're playing so many Magician Girls. Um, she is good at two because she's basically a free draw. I might sub her out eventually, but for now she's uh, in the deck because she's still a good defensive card because you can just banish cards for Kingdom just to keep them on the field and protect yourself for a little bit. And our last monster, Max C, because we have hand problems in the deck. Moving on to the spell cards, we do have three copies of Toon Kingdom. This is our uh, OCG copies, clearly because TCG copies are ridiculously overpriced, and this will not be a meta deck by any means. Um, you, can, you have to banish the top three cards of your deck to activate it face down, which is the main reason why we don't play Pod Desires, because we already banished specific combo pieces um, as it is already. And um, it counts as Toon World on the field. Our opponent cannot target our tunes with effects, and if our tunes would be destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, we can banish top card by deck face down instead for each one. So, very, very good card. Can be searched by Toon Table and can be searched by Terraforming as well. We do play three copies of Toon Table because it's broken and it searches for any Toon card, including itself. Main reason we're playing it is to search for Kingdom and uh, Toon Rollback, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, we can also search for Dark Magician Girl, but we have a lot of other ways in our deck to search Dark Magician Girl. Um, it also can search itself, so it's very, very good, and it's not once per turn, so we can have decent filter there. Then we have two copies of Toon Rollback. So Toon Rollback is a card that I really want to play in the deck because it's troll, and it works really well with the beatdown combo for Dark Magician Girl, because it lets um, her, one of, you know, you use it, one of your toons can make a second attack each battle phase. So if you use Toon Rollback on one of your Dark Magician Girls, then you drop three Kiwis, she's going to keep the attack points, because um, Kiwi's not a damage step effect, she's just until the end of the turn. 
which makes her so, so good to use Tomb Rollback with. It is searchable through um, Tomb Table as well, so it's really, really nice. And Tomb Dark Richard can search it as well if you choose to play him. And finally, for our last two Tomb cards, we do play two copies of Comic Hand, because this deck can brick quite a bit, and Comic Hand, as long as we have our Tomb Kingdom out, can actually take our opponent's monsters, and we can use them as tunes. We can also use them as Tribute Father as well. And this card doesn't target because it's an equip spell, so... Interesting, yeah, very interesting card there, and it's a nice. I like, I like the idea of the card. Next up, we have two copies of Magical Dimension. So Magical Dimension is a very old card. It works really well in this deck because it lets us summon DMG um, or any of our spell cards. But again, the deck's focused on DMG. Um, let's just summon uh, Tune DMG in our either our opponent's turn or our turn, and we can if we can only get one out on the field, we can use Dimension. We can attack with her, or even if we've used. Um, rollback actually um and the kiwis so we've attacked with her she attacks again with rollback then we can magical dimension tribute one summon another one from our hand and then attack again straight away because we're in battle phase and we get to destroy one of our opponent's monsters as well because again dmg is not affected by it doesn't have summoning sickness like the other tunes it's really really good we can also use it for one of uh for chocolate for example or any of other magician goals who are declared as attack targets after they've had their effect go off so we can always just summon one there so we don't lose them too much Next up, we have one copy of Spellbook of Wisdom to protect our spellcasters from spell and trap effects that don't target. Um, of course, we can only use one on one spellcaster and only um, one of the effects, but it's still nice to play at one because we can search it through secrets. And because we play two secrets, obviously we play two knowledge because our deck is mostly spellcasters and we need cards in hand. Um, I don't play Blue Boy because the most of the time my normal summon wants to be Berry Magician Girl because she can replace herself straight away with a Dune Dark Magician Girl. Uh, finally, we play up one copy of Foolish Burial, one copy of Dark Magic Veil. Foolish Burial just to mill a Magician Girl to give Kiwi more power. Dark Magic Veil because it can summon Dark Magician Girl from our hand. Uh, Tune Dimension Girl from our hand or from our graveyard, as we have really no um, too much recursion. I might play two Veil, but at the moment one is fine because we only have three targets in our deck for the card. I still think it's fine to play at one. And finally, we do end up obviously three traps, uh, two Solemn Strike and one Solemn Warning because our deck is already very slow. And chances are, people we're playing against, if you're playing this deck, you weren't, you would obviously be playing this deck against friends. Um, but chances are, their deck may be a lot more faster and more consistent than yours. And Solemn Strike and Solemn Warning do are nice budget ways to stop your opponent. You know, obviously, you don't have to play hand traps. I think hand traps would clog this deck up quite a bit as well already. But um, Strike and Warning, really, really nice cards that can slop your opponent down. So anyway, guys, that is just my initial uh, build for the deck as of the 16th of, um, I think it's 16th, yeah, as of the 16th of January 2018. As I come up with more ideas for the deck and a closer to a finalized build, I will add some more videos on this deck. I think this idea is such a cool idea and I really want to get this deck to work as consistently as possible. And if you guys have any suggestions on ways I can increase the consistency or the power or some other cool combos I can do that I haven't thought of, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And until then, I will catch you guys for my next video.